What is going on? And we are back, and I'm here with my good friend again, Mr. Robert Venable, and he is going to, uh, he runs Off the Wall Studios with his partner, Lester Estelle, yeah, right? He drums for Kelly Clarkson, and yeah. he used to be with Big and Rich, and a band called Pillar, all sorts of things. He's what you call a good drummer. <laughs> he knows how to play the drum. Shut up. I mean, he is, but <laughs> as I told you in the last video where we did on miking the snare drum, Robert knows what he's doing. He's really sought after as an engineer and producer for his drum sounds. This video in particular, we're gonna talk about Miking your kick drum. Getting that bass is all about that bass. Megan Trainer. Really, my whole life is about Megan Trainer. So in this video, we're gonna talk about our love for Megan Trainer. <laughs> cool. So here are four steps that I actually use in the recording studio to get your kick drum sounding great on the tape. We don't record a tape anymore. These are four steps that I use in the recording studio. Why is that funny? <laughs> You're cutting the tape and splicing. <laughs> you glue the tape. What century are we in? When you press the record, you're gonna. I made fire, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here are four steps that I actually use every day when I record a kick drum in the recording studio to make it sound more like a kick drum and less like a piece of paper. Before we jump over there, though, Robert and I both we want to know what are your biggest questions. Robert's going to be answering some of those as well. What is your biggest tip? Maybe you work in the studio full time. What's your biggest tip for miking up a kick drum to get a great tone? Put those in the comments below. I'm bored. Wanna go to the studio? Yep. Let's go. What are your tips for miking up? And we have a couple of kicks here. They actually have a ton of kick drums here at the studio. But uh, we wanted to show you kind of both sides so that you can see what's going on with these miking techniques. Yeah, so, so, so we don't flip around back and forth to the other side of the drum kit. Um, basically, three easy steps to getting your kick drum sounding great in the recording studio. Number one, my favorite things to show you um, is make sure you have, again, like the snare drum, a good, clean, non-battered head on the batter yeah. head side and the resonance side, um, which means no gashes from moving it, um, right. throw it in the back of the trailer or the pickup truck or your Honda Civic. And and kick drums are bad about getting, you know, a little slice here if you're using a two-ply or whatever, and all those can be picked up when you're in the studio. Yeah, and if you've got duct tape on your drum head, I'm going to go ahead and say change it. Yeah. Um, also, if it's starting to get wrinkled in here from just battering the crap out of it, and you just keep tightening it, it's not going to sound great. I mean, it's getting thinner, and you're spreading it, and it's not spreading evenly or sitting tightly on the, on the edge of the of the drum like it should be. It's not seated right. Um, it's just not going to sound right, especially when the microphone's right on it, trying to capture every little nuance. It's worth the investment. Like if you're spending all this money on mics and trying to record this, like it is worth the investment just to you know spend the extra 40 50 bucks and get a good kick drum head absolutely so even if you just use it for recording maybe that's just a kick drum head you use for recording you take it off and then put it back on when you yeah. come to record so great idea all right cool so we have good tuning that's the rule number one i i feel like i should just make a shirt you know tune your drum absolutely. what's the what's the second thing whenever it comes to the kick drum and going hand in hand with tuning is the way the drum sounds once you get the head sounding great the inside the resonance of the drum it's all dependent on, besides what it's made of and, and what you're kicking it with and the kind of heads you have on it, it's what you have inside of there. If you have an old dead cat, if you've got three towels, your favorite, you know, bedroom dressing suite of clothes and all the different things you have on your bedding just shoved in there, or egg crate carton stuff, or whatever people throw in, bean bags, right. or all the different gimmicks that different drum companies right. make. Lots of them are great, and lots of them are kind of cruddy. So it, it all changes the way it sounds. It changes how echoey or boomy it is in there, as well as how tight or punchy it can be, right. depending on how much stuff you have in there. And it depends. There's no wrong or right here. There's, it's like with tuning. There's no wrong or right. There's just sound. And so it's either a good sound that you like or it's a bad sound. So if you're doing like a jazz album, you may want a completely open drum. Yeah, with, take the whole front head off of it. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the type of sound. You're, you know, if you're going for that 80s vibe, take the whole head off. If you want, you know, that tighter, more open, like a Peter Erskine would get. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got a completely open drum on the inside with no muffling. So it just depends on really what you're going for. Right, and doing a lot of rock and pop like I do, I want a little tighter sound. Okay. So I don't recommend throwing a whole comforter in there yeah, um, or a few t-shirts, but in this one in particular, I just have what, like a dish towel, golf towel, and a t one t-shirt rolled up. Right. Um, and obviously, you don't want it sitting against the head too tightly, or else it might sound really thuddy, unless that's the sound you're going for. Right. I usually sit it along the bottom. It doesn't need to go all the way around. You need to tape it in there. Um, but just let it sit in the bottom there to kill some of the resonant frequencies that are bouncing around in this giant circle that you're hitting with a kick drum pedal. All right. So we have... Uh, obviously tuning the kick up, making sure it's got a good head on it. Uh, then we have the muffling, which is important. Depending on it, there's no right or wrong. It just depends on what style you're playing. Now, what, what do we need to look for next? Let's talk about the microphones that we're going to hit it with. Okay. Now, once we got it sounding good in the room, we need to capture that sound. So, 
One of my favorite go-to mics for the inside of the kick drum, which is going to go inside of here, obviously, is the Audix D6. Okay. Again, you're going to look for something that's going to take licking. You're going to want something that's going to handle the high pressure sound volumes that you're hitting with the kick pedal. I mean, things are loud. So if it's a sensitive ribbon mic, it's not going to work out well. But this one has a good kind of built-in EQ for kick drum, which I love, um, for pop and rock sounds particularly. I've also used it on some country records. Um, but this one will be good. And the way I place this one is, well, let's just show you. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and place this carefully in the hole so you're not making the hole any larger than what it was originally. Now, a lot of kick drums, like your own, probably don't have the hole exactly centered. Some do. A lot of the older ones do for sure, but these days they're making them off center a little bit, which is a pain in the butt for miking purposes. Right. So what I'm going to do is get the mic as close to the center of the drum as I can, and I'm going to get it about not one-third, but two-thirds of the way into the drum, if you can see that. Yeah. So from where the kick pedal hits it, we've got a third of the drum before that sound wave hits my, hits my microphone. Okay. And cool. I'm going to name the, aim the microphone directly at where the kick is. So if we go back over to here, and my microphone's in there, I'm going to aim it straight for where the kick pedal is hitting. Right. So straight at the point of impact. Absolutely. Not up here. Where if it's aimed happens. up here or if it's aimed straight where the hole is, it's, it's going to be a little off-centered right. kick drum sound. You're not going to have that attack from the beater hitting it. Right. It's going to sound a little bit muffled. A little, you're going to lose some of the high-end frequency. If you want to hear that kick, kick, aim exactly from where the beater is hitting the head. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm aiming it exactly towards the circle. And there we go. Now, second type of microphone, a lot of people will do, is mic the outside. Now, this is a sub kick. Basically, it's a eight or 10 inch um, speaker that's been wired inversely. Okay. You don't need to know about that, that's just how it comes. <laughs> it's, it's way so, too deep. So, it, it, basically, this is gonna capture a lot of the very lows and sub lows that your kick is producing from the resonant head. Okay. So when this thing vibrates, those huge vibrations are gonna be captured by this microphone. And I want this, pretty close to the head, parallel to the head. I don't want it slightly tilted in. I don't want it slightly tilted out. I don't want it aiming at the floor. I want it just along the side of the head here. So it's even from this side to this side, and this side to this side. It is perfectly even with the head. So when you kick this kick drum and this vibrates, it's capturing those vibrations evenly. And this is gonna be the very so, sub low and low stuff in the mix. It's gonna give it that rumble when you kick that kick drum. And you can blend okay. that to taste with this one. Again, right. watch for phase. If it sounds thin, maybe move this back a little bit. If it sounds thick, don't change it. Right. It sounds great. Oh.
Hopefully these tips will help you get a better kick sound whenever you're in the studio next. If it helped you, maybe share it with another drummer or musician you think it might help as well as push the thumbs up button below. After you hit the thumbs up button below, head over to learnhowtorecord.com if you want some more tips and kind of see how I work in the studio from day to day. I'm signed up for my email list. I'm sending out tips and techniques videos all the time. Just stuff I normally do. Whether you share this with somebody else or go over and check out his website or you go and check out some other videos, whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video. In my studio? Here? Yeah, actually, because we're filming more, so yeah, it's gonna be, we'll sorry. Be here. I meant to tell you about that.